Hello everyone, Miss Carrie here from Miss Carrie's Creations. Today I'm sharing a lovely spring page that I created using chipboard and stencils. This layout will involve a few mixed media elements and I'm going to share some simple tricks to help you recreate this design. Today I'm working with some floral and foliage chipboard from the Dusty Attic. Cherry blossoms are some of my favorite florals, so I'll be working with those today. I have also brought in some leaves and a few stencils that I'll be using on the page. I'm going to be pairing these with a vintage collection from Simple Stories, which has some softer greens that will complement the pink in the cherry blossoms. As I create this layout, I'll bring in a few more items to the design, and I'll make sure to add those to the list of supplies in the description below. I'm going to start with the coloring of the chipboard pieces so that they have time to dry before I place them on the page. I like to place these onto a silicone grip mat so that they stay in place when I'm coloring them. These pieces have been prepped with some white gesso. I have a little sampling here of the colors with and without the white gesso. Before I color in images, I always experiment with the colors and coatings on a scrap piece of chipboard. This allows me to see what the color is going to look like once it dries. I will be using a mix of shimmers paints and watercolor pencils on my chipboard. To activate the inklings, you just add a little bit of water. I like to place the pigment on my glass board and water it down to create a washed look. I am using a light touch to add the color to each of the floral pieces on the chipboard. I am going to speed up the video here and skip over quite a few parts as I add coloring to this chipboard. This did take a little bit of time and I had to wait for some of the different inks to dry. If you have any questions about the coloring process, go ahead and put those in the comments below. While the pigment is still wet, I'm going to add some shadows with the watercolor pencils. I'm using fired brick and picked raspberry. The watercolor pigment in these pencils is going to be softer and blend into the paint a bit. To blend it even more, I'm going to bring back in some of the pink pigment and soften all of those harsher lines. If you get a little heavy handed with paint, just bring in some clean water and push that pigment towards the center. These are going to become lighter as they dry, so a little more pigment won't hurt anything. On the stems or branches, I'm adding a coffee shimmers paint. This pigment is a little bit thicker and I want a heavier coating, so I'm just going to take it directly from the lid of the jar. As I add this to the branches, I am going to blend this color into some of the buds just to darken the base a bit. Once I added all of that coffee color to the branches, I added a watered down version of it to the flowers to give them a little bit of shading and a distressed look. This softens all of the brighter colors and gives them the same aged look as the pattern papers I'm going to be using. In the center, I'm going to add some pops of color for dimension. This is a liquid embellishment that's going to take a little bit of time to dry. You could also add some gems or paint or pearls. The botanical pieces that I picked are going to be painted with a coal color and a soft blue green. The set with the coal has not been prepped because I want it to have a more muted look. The shimmer is still going to show up on these, it just won't be as prominent without a gesso backing. The second set of leaves is going to be prepped with gesso. The white gesso that I added has been watered down to give it more of a washed look. And while the gesso is still wet, 
I am going to drip the inklings onto that wet pigment and let it pool and flow. The color I'm using is usually much more vibrant, but I want it to be softer, so I mixed it with the white gesso to give it a cooler feel. So while I finish adding color to all of these botanical pieces, I would love it if you tapped that subscribe button and let me know in the comments that you are new here. If you are already a subscriber and you are enjoying this video, go ahead and tap that thumbs up button or let me know in the comments if you learned something new today. So I have gone ahead and finished shading in all of those botanical pieces and I'm just going to go ahead and set them aside to dry. The last set of chipboard pieces that I want to add color to are the smaller daisies. I have already painted these with a layer of white gloss spray and that is an acrylic spray that did take a little bit of time to dry. I'm going to add a spray of mauve dye over the top. This does not have any shimmer in it, so it's going to be a nice contrast against all of the other glittery items on the page. Since the base coat was an acrylic paint, the water-based spray is going to pool and create a watercolor-like look. If you want to add more color to these, you can bring in a brush and drip this spray onto various parts of the flower like I'm doing here. I wanted the centers of the flowers to be a little bit darker, so I mixed some of the mauve color with the coal and added it into the centers. Once these dry, they're going to have a beautiful look and texture to them. So I'm going to set all of these items aside to dry and I'm going to start creating the background for my layout and add some items to the page. The photo I selected is one that was created on a collage app and each one of the frames has the same picture in varying shades of gray and sepia tones. These types of pictures are a common place in our everyday lives, so I thought, why not scrapbook it? After all, how many photos do you have of your grandparents that were obviously staged photos or really bad selfies? Those make up just as many memories as the ones that we have today. I marked the area where I had placed the photo and those papers so that I can bring in some modeling paste leaves. These are going to be left white and just used to add a little bit of texture to my background. Whenever I'm creating mixed media elements like this, I like to make sure I have quite a few different pieces in the foreground and the background just to create a little bit of depth and dimension. After my paste dried, I brought in a background stencil. I'm going to use this to add some more pink to the page. The cherry blossoms are going to be placed on the left side of the page, so I want to bring in a little bit of pink to the right, and I'm going to do that with some sponge sugar and kitsch flamingo. Now, I tend to be a little bit heavy handed with ink, so I often tap the brush off into my lid to remove some of the excess before I blend it onto the page. I don't want these colors to be extremely bright because this does have more of a vintage distressed feel. So I'm using very little color as I add these two pinks to the page. Most of the items I'm going to add to this page, including the background paper, have a darker brown distress color to them. So I'm going to bring that stencil back in and overlap the pink grid pattern with some more grid lines in a ground espresso. This is going to be much more random, but it is going to help tone down the bright pink a bit and create a nice frame around the photo. All right, now that the background is complete and all of my chipboard pieces are dry, I'm going to start adding all the items to the page. 
I have already adhered one of the cherry blossom branches to the page and now I'm piecing together some pattern paper to place behind my photo. This paper kit is an older one in my collection that I've been meaning to use up, which means that I have random cut apart cards and strips of paper to work with. When those paper patterns were finally puzzled together, I added that second cherry blossom branch. These are a bit delicate, so I need to make sure that I find other pieces to stabilize those lower branches as I add additional layers. I know that I'll be adding some leaves and daisies here, so I'm not going to use any foam tape or adhesives until I have those pieces in place. I will be adding quite a bit of weight to the left side of the page, so I'm going to place my title on the lower right. I have just set those pieces here for now so that I can visually see how this layout is going to look when I add the other parts. Some of that title has lovely curves, so I'm going to add some leaves below the photo that curve into the title. Working with chipboard does require a little bit of pre-planning, especially if you're using detailed pieces that you plan on layering on your page. The leaves, florals, and film strip all have beautiful details, but there's not much room for foam tape. I did quite a bit of off-camera work to make sure that all of my layers were level before I adhered everything in place. The film strip was added as a horizontal element below the photo, but layering it over the branch and the leaves meant I needed to add more structure with some leaves and florals underneath that film strip. All right, so I went ahead and added all the florals to the lower left and the florals in the upper right. You can see that now that those daisies are dry, they have a beautiful coloring and texture that was created with the mix of acrylics and water-based dye. I'm starting to fill in some of my spaces with embellishments. I'm bringing in a large butterfly sticker in a blue-green color, which matches some of my leaves, and I'm going to bring in some butterflies in soft neutral tones. These are going to give the page some movement. I'm going to add a few more items to this page, and then I'll show you the completed layout. Off camera, I added some little bits of tan stitching near the sticker phrases. I decided to add three of them that say, today, love this, and amazing, right there above the title. This finished off this space really well and brought more weight to this side of the page. I also added some pale tan pearls to the centers of the cherry blossoms and some clear bubbles to a few of those mauve florals. To bring in more of the pale pink color, I added a paper clip at the top of the photo and then I finished off the page with some coffee colored splatters. This layout was created to record a fun memory of the relationship between these two family members. I chose a fun filled photo collage for my page and framed it with bits of chipboard, stencils, and ephemera. As I created this layout, I packed in quite a few mixed media techniques and I hope that they inspired you to try something new. If you are one who enjoys pinning projects to inspiration boards, I have placed still shots of this project on the Dusty Attic blog and on my website for you to use. To see more creative ideas, visit the Dusty Fanatics group on Facebook. Thank you for joining me today. If you have any questions about the project or supplies listed below, feel free to post that in the comments. I hope that you have a wonderful week and I can't wait to see what you create.